Hello everyone and welcome back to another Universe Sandbox video and today we're going to be checking out another one of your guys' solar systems and today we got a system from the user Rusty in Discord so massive thank you to them for sending in their system and this system is called Soul, the Galactic Siren so without further ado let's go ahead and see what they have prepared for us so subscribe it should already be in here ready to rock and roll there it is okay right what do we got let's have a look here Right, oh, hello. Oh, sun. Okay. Sun is a soul. All right. This is one of my stories. Okay, there's some, I'm guessing there's some sort of writer in it, right? Mm. I came up with this concept late one night and figured, you know what? Screw it. I might as well give my own take on the solar system. So I did. Canonically, this takes place in 2459. Okay, so a couple hundred years in the future from now. Right, so. Vulcan is here. <laughs> okay. So it's like an alternate reality of the solar system. Uh, yeah, it basically is. Okay, interesting. Right, so. Obviously, the sun is the sun. No description for that. Right, so first up, we've got Vulcan. So as we know, here it is. Vulcan was... Um, oh, wow. Ooh, I like the way that looks. Ooh. <laughs> I like that. Vulcan was once... More like Mars early in its history, but now it's hell. Nobody wants to even go near it, despite how rich in resources it is. I really like the way that's been designed. That looks really good. Uh, there's Vulcan. Then we have a good old Mercury. Ooh, colonized Mercury. This is in the future. Well, I say colonized. It's been... Uh, there's people on it. Doesn't. It's got clouds. So that helps, right? Um, Mercury speed through space gives it a reputation as the swiftest planet, but it's also the most desolate. It's been untouched since the solar system's early days, but thanks to us, that's changing. Actually, is that for the worse? Uh oh, there's Mercury. So that's got some uh, inhabitants on it. Okay, so what's going on with Venus? So Venus now has moons. Venus has its twin moons, Neith and Zeus. Zeus, Zeus, Fee? I'm not sure I say that. It's a case of toxic dense atmosphere. It's been a mystery until 2097 when we finally started habitation on Earth's evil twin. So I'm guessing underneath it's a little uh, any different. That still looks the same as always. Okay, so they're starting work on it. So there's Venus. Got the moons. There you go. Oh, there's a motorcycle outside. <laughs> right, anyway, so. So, okay, it's got the, the, these have descriptions as well. So, Neve's rocky, broken surface is riddled with craters, telling the stories of a violent impact some long ago. It's been dancing around Venus for billions of years, a quiet sentinel observing its fiery sibling. No one's ever seen life here, just scars of the past etched deep into its surface. Very nice. And then we got a Zuzi over here. It's always been the little moon, the afterthought, with rough terrain that shows its ancient journey. It's spent millennia in quiet orbit, it's forgotten world, but its scars hold the keys to Venus' Celtic past. Okay. Then we have Earth. So what's going on with Earth? Earth looks greener than normal. What's going on here? Oh, very green. Okay. Earth, the cradle of humanity. It used to be a polluted wasteland, but thanks to the United Nation of Humankind, it's Hatterall again. Earth is paradise, with fauna and flora across its history on its surface, in the water and the air. It's the homeland of humanity. All major human politics happen here. And there you go. So you can see a good old Earth. There's no, it looks like the deserts are all green. So it's proper, proper terraformed up. Nice and uh, clear. See the Himalayas, the mountains are still cold. But you see the desert area. It's now all green. So it's a little more, a little more friendly. So uh, looking good in the future here. Uh, we've got Lua. What is this? Whoa. That second smashed up. Its fast orbit has been shaping Earth's tides for as long as oceans can exist. It was once thought to be a star. Its sulfuric glow cast eerie light across the night. Early legends claimed it guided sailors, but its strange makeup has baffled even the earlier, oldest civilizations, including those watching from afar. Dot, dot, dot. Interesting. So we also have this little thing here. What is this? It's very close to Earth. Another little rock. Then we have the moon itself over here. Terraform moon as well. Okay. The moon's nitrogen CO2 atmosphere has been whispering across its surface in millennia, an ancient feature. The same moon that light our skies has always had a quiet breath of air, too thin for life but enough to make you wonder. Lunar craters tell impacts long ago before humans arrive. It's been watching over Earth since the beginning and has seen humanity grow. Yeah. There you go. The moon's looking pretty good in this few alternate reality future. Uh, next up we've got Mars with a very red trail. What's going on over Mars? Has a ring system now. 
Looks like Phobos has been destroyed. By the Roosh limit. Okay, so Mars looking a little, uh, a little good. Mars's ring system has been encircling it for the past millennia, a remnant of its shattered past. Mars has always been uh, dry and somewhat warm, but its lakes have quietly flowed since the early states. The Red Planet's mystery was there before humans took their first steps, with its canyons and dust storms whispering secrets of a distant time. There you go. Looking good, old Mars. And there's Deimos there, so Phobos has been destroyed. That's obviously the result in the ring system. So now we have Ceres. There it is, the moon as well. Ceres has been an icy giant of the asteroid belt. Its atmosphere was born from the heat of distant impacts. Water ice covered the plains long before humans dreamed of its space. Its moon Demeter has circled it since time is immemorial. A frozen companion in the asteroid belt's eternal dance with the Jovian giant Jupiter. Nice. And we also have Vesta there. There's no description for Vesta. So the moon of uh, Ceres O Demeter here. Its cracks and geysers tell of a world under constant stress. So yeah, there it is. Um, shifting and reforming billions of years. Its tiny orbit around a series has been a steady rhythm as ancient as the solar system itself. The ice here is as old as any known in space. Because of that, it's great interest to the uh, Earth humans. Okay. Lovely. Good stuff. Next up, we have Jupiter. Let's get to Jupiter. So we've got the good old Galilean moons. What's Phobos doing there? So what was the rings of Mars if Phobos is there? Interesting. Jupiter. Storms have roared billions of years. The great world spot a colossal hurricane that's been churning for eons. Its mass of gravity has been heard in the outer planet since their formation and is now used for gravity system solar cell probes and made emissions to star systems beyond that have yet to be reached. Lovely. So Jupiter. Tell me have Io. Ooh, Io's looking pretty. Ooh. Ooh, the black cloud. I like the black clouds on Io. Looks good. Jupiter's peak supply. Io has been circling Jupiter for as long as the other Jovian moons, with its densely thick atmosphere, which tends to be comprised of numerous gases. Humanity is yet to colonize this world just because of the volcanism, because of the radiation Jupiter rains upon it. Yeah, don't go to Io. Probably get some earthquake action there as well. Very close. Europa. To the frozen ocean. The subsurface ocean to the complex life. Europa is a world that has always been interesting, even since all humans learned it was oceanic. Uh, where humans started moving outwards into space, Europa was the second Jovian moon con colonised. Contact with those below the surface was lost ten years ago. Ooh, dearly me. Ganymede. The largest of the moons. The second largest moon in the solar system. What the heck? Second largest? What's the largest then? Well, a lot in, in reality, we actually thought Titan was bigger. Back in the 80s, 70s and 80s, I think we actually generally thought Titan was the largest moon. But then I think it was proven that Ganymede was actually larger in the uh, later years. So, I wonder if they're going to put Titan as the largest moon. We haven't got to it yet. We will see. Unless there's another moon added in here that isn't part of the normal solar system. Ah, yes, Ganymede, the second largest moon in the solar system. Oh, that just sounds wrong when you say that. <laughs> there's not much to be said. It's an ice world just like our almost every other moon in the outer solar system. Okay. Callisto. Looks a little different to usual. Error, nothing interesting. Well, supposedly Ganymede and Callisto have some hidden ice on them as well. So, some, I think Ganymede's the one with the possible ice sheets in it as well. Kind of like Europa's set up. But Callisto's the more bashed up one. It's seen a lot. Has a very old surface. Lots of craters on Callisto. It's probably one of the most heavy cratered surfaces in the solar system, I believe. Um, Callisto. And then you have Phobos here. So if Phobos, the moon of Mars, is around Jupiter... Then what resulted in the ring system around Mars? That doesn't make sense to me. Fairly interesting. Next up we have Saturn. So. So you got Saturn, it's normal set of moons. Okay. Ooh, what's this glowing hot? Saturn's bright rings have dazzled untold Melia, a beacon in the night sky that's drawn wonder since the dawn of time. The gas giant's moons have been locked in a chaotic dance, shifting colliding over millions of years. It's been a quiet garden in the outer solar system. And was shown to be on recently when a comet 20 kilometers in diameter slammed into its equator. The heat signature is still there 20 years later. Uh. So, Saturn moons. Not much to be said about them. Titan still takes the cake for public interest. Everything else is left in the dust. Yep, so they're just the same old. Yep. So, Saturn's moons, as we know and love them. Very nice. So, there's Titan. Looking cool as always. 
Doesn't say anything about Titan being the largest though, so I don't know, maybe that's just a mistake. I'm not sure. Hmm, interesting. But yeah, in reality it is Ganymede, so interesting. So what is Zelot? What what is this? Zelots, it's like a jar, bigger titan or something. Zelots me faces have floated into the solar system forms, making it a quiet, cold ocean world. Its thick atmosphere has kept it hidden in the shadows of the outer planet, with its liquid methane forming vast, seamlessly frozen oceans. But these oceans are from frozen. Besides titans in the Earth, Zelot is one of the most active weather cycles um, in the local 20 light years of stars. Interesting. So it's like a bigger, it's like a planet sized titan. What's this? What is this radius? It was actually smaller than Titan. It's a, yeah. Or is it? I'm pretty sure Titan's bigger than Titan's about two thousand. Well, yeah, Titan's bigger than Mercury, and Mercury's two thousand two thousand four hundred, isn't it? On a d radius. Uh, wait, where's about Mercury? I'm sure Mercury's two four. Is it two four forty? I think, isn't it? Yeah, two four forty. So, and Titan is bigger than Mercury. So that means that this thing is tiny. This is a dwarf planet. Zelot. I mean, that's what. Pluto's um, 1186, isn't it? So this is actually smaller than Pluto as well. Okay. Next up is Uranus. So. Known for the butt jokes. Being on its size and being really boring. It's colonised. Everyone just hates living there. Oh, it's a lot more interesting than you think. I'd say Uranus. Because the biggest mystery on this is why is it on its side? What hit it? Something has gone wrong in the past. And then they have the uh, interesting theory of Miranda. Why is Miranda's surface so cracked? And well, you know, it looks like it's reassembled itself, for instance. So, well, you know, what's what's the deal of that? You know, there's there's a lot of mysteries in Uranus's system, and there's not only large, like ultra large moons. Titania is the largest of the moons, but it's smaller than Pluto. So, Uranus's moons are a very interesting set, despite being probably the most forgotten moons, really. So, yeah, it's an interesting one, Uranus. Always been, I've had some good discussions with people about that. And they've actually said it. I don't see anything to say here. Miranda is the most interesting of Uranus's moons, if you ask me. Next up, we have Neptune. Good old Neptune. Right, what's going on here? Those rings are insane. What's going on there? Neptune's been the last great giant for as long as anyone remembers. Its blue storms formed centuries ago. It's a world of deep mysteries with Triton as its cold moon, captured long before humans could observe. The far reaches of its orbit are still a realm of science. The ensuing system is still an enigma, a mystery unsolved to this day in... 22, 3, or 20, 30. Yeah. So, if this has rings, then why is Triton still here? Because effectively, Triton will be torn up in the future. And that will make rings of Neptune, effectively. So, what made these rings? Because these are a lot bigger than what it normally has. There's Protus. So, there we have Triton as well. Triton looks different. What's going on here? Bit of an atmosphere going on there. Okay. Neptune's greatest moon. Triton's nitrogen guys as a spouted for eons, making it an ancient world long before it's captured by Neptune. Its surface has become a playground for science, both that in geology, chemistry, and kids in space who's trying to learn about the worlds of the universe. Interesting. This is a very strange alternate reality. you got a ring system around Mars, but Phobos is around Jupiter, so what would have formed those? You've got the massive ring system around Neptune, but Triton still exists. Interesting. Next up, we have Pluto, the ninth planet. The ninth planet. There you go. Remember the last? I can't remember the last time I said that. Probably what 2005. <laughs> oh wow. Something like that. Oh man, Pluto is a planet. Who remembers that? Where are we? Just barely. Just barely. Um, right. So, it's always been intrigued to everyone, not because of how famous it is, but because of the world it is. Cryovolcanism, a seasonal atmosphere, and more. It's been an early target since commercial space exploration that opened to the public in 2067. I'll tell you what, if we have that in 2067, that'd be great. <laughs> be absolutely great. So, what's further out? So we've got Thanatos, which is this. This is large, it's larger than Earth. So, what was Thanatos? The solar system is seemingly missing super Earth, ejected into the outer reaches by Jupiter around 4 billion years ago. It's been there ever since. Its hydrogen and helium atmosphere have shielded it from prion eyes, while its surface has stayed locked in ammonia and methane eyes. It's a long forgotten world, only brought back in the spotlight by human industries by the Nico shipyard, which humanity's um, faster than my spacecraft. It also has some. Uh, there's a shipyard, it has a moon as well, there's a mole. And then lastly, we have Fenrir, which 
which is over here. So this is basically the planet 9 then. Just like Thanatos, Femir is ejected into the outer reaches by Jupiter. It formed as the fifth gas giant alongside the others, and it's the smallest gas giant in the entire system. Its gravity has been strong, steering comets and distant objects. Yeah, it's planet 9. Nice. And then that is it. A very interesting alternate reality. You know, everything's similar, but slightly different. I like that about alternate realities. And the fact that, you know, that Pluto's a planet. Ganymede is the second largest moon. But is that actually true? Radius. Let's actually see. Have they actually changed the stats over? Where, where is it? No, they haven't. They've got... So, so Ganymede is the largest moon. <laughs> There's a little, maybe a little error there. Ooh, Vulcan is larger than Mars. Supposedly Vulcan was a very small planet. Okay. But yeah, Ganymede. The, the, the second largest moon. But it's bigger than Titan still. And Mercury. Interesting. Very interesting. I don't know if that's a little nod to the old... I'm getting, maybe that's a nod to the old... What we used to think was... Because we did used to think Ganymede was slightly smaller. We used to think Titan was the biggest. So, interesting nod to the past there, if that's intentional. And obviously Pluto being a planet. That, that That's very strange nowadays. <laughs> but I liked it nonetheless. I do like these alternate... Cause we've, seen a few the, we've seen some of these before, like alternate reality solar systems. I do like these concepts. They are fascinating. I still want to know what caused the rings around Mars and Neptune if their moons are still intact. And what is Phobos doing around Jupiter? That is very strange. But there you go. Interesting nonetheless. Enjoyed it. Hope you guys did as well. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down below in the comments. And again, a massive thank you to the creator of this system, Rusty, for sending this in. That was an interesting one. But that will send down everybody. Let's see if we can go for 100 likes on today's video as well. And subscribe for more. Help us on the journey to 50,000 subscribers. And that will send down everybody. Make sure you have a great day. Stay safe out there. And I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.